I feel the dark It prowls my street It whispers in And pulls my feet So who drive to find some comfort on the breeze To go somewhere I'm out of there I'm out till dawn Right, uh, so Daniel Fraser of I Am Not Left Handed, uh, nice to speak to you. Thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us. No problem, thanks for having me. And I guess we'll start off uh, by asking you to tell us uh, all about the band and uh, the music you make. Cool, we're a three-piece, mostly Irish band. Catherine and I are Irish and then our drummer is English and we met in London, all three of us together, um, about, gosh, four or five years ago now. And we're currently based in California, which has been a bit of a shift which happened just about a year ago now. Um, and yeah, we've released two EPs so far and we've just finished our first full length album, which we put out. And uh, now the album, this is where it gets interesting from a social media cafe point of view, because you used uh, crowdfunding, didn't you, to fund this album? Tell me how that came about. Yeah, absolutely. It was quite um, interesting and also a subtle way to get into it. We kind of, I mean, you record your music and you just put it out to every website going and stuff. And this was really just one of the websites that we'd uploaded songs onto to kind of get somebody to hear it. And it was called Slice the Pie. And their process is they have a lot of anonymous listeners who listen to and review a lot of different songs and stuff. And for whatever reason, after we'd been up there quite a while, so it took a while. I think it was then we put up newer tracks and they got well rated. And so we got through a thing called a showcase round, which there's, I think, 15 or so artists were in it. And they were so... Once you're through to that round, you've kind of been approved by the several thousand listeners or whatever on the website. So yeah, we, you get through to the showcase round and you've given a certain target and things and you have to try and raise that much money. And it's an interesting model. I mean, we kind of, it was a great opportunity. It wasn't something that we pursued actively. This was, I think, about two and a half years now ago. This it was quite a long process. It was about six months altogether, the actual funding period, which... Yeah may or may not have been a good thing. I mean, it was good in one sense. We had plenty of time to talk about it with people, but actually it slightly took over our lives and kind of you spend everything, for, which is great because that's what we were trying to do was raise funds for the album. But it does, It. I mean, you have to be prepared for it, definitely. You can't just do it casually. You say that uh, these were anonymous people at first, but I take it you, you got to engage with some of these people and talk to some of the people who were offering... Oh, absolutely. The model that they were kind of using as a fan funding model was definitely pitched towards people investing in music. So this is to get through to this round, you were seen to be well liked by the general population. So then people would, they would have earned some credits on the site, but I think you, you also invest regular money as well. So it was kind of like a make your own record label kind of thing. You pick up act you think is going to succeed and you put the money into them. So then we definitely, the people who were the firm investors would like ask us questions and things and we'd try and show them what we'd done so far and where we got to and why it would be a good investment essentially. Did the people who were uh, looking to invest, did they get sort of much involved in the creative process or, or I should say, did what they say influence what you're actually doing in terms of making it? They did have some good feedback in terms of wanting to support us as a band generally rather than with the specific album. So some of them were based in different places and would try and say, why don't you come and tour in this place or we have this contact and one of them up in i can't remember newcastle i think somewhere northern had us up to come play on the student tv show and stuff and then had good suggestions for that so more in a broader sense they were like a helpful like a very active community it was great and do you think uh, doing it that way do you think it helps spread the word more generally about the band then get your name out there a bit more Oh, I completely agree. It was as much like it was great and the funding was great and it was hard work and it paid off fantastically. But also the fact that you're doing something interesting that you can then approach other people who aren't related to the process and say, look, we're not trying to push ourselves, but we're doing this thing. And if you could spread the word, like it's great. It's always with kind of talking to media or things like that. It's great to have some sort of just hook or be seen to do something exciting or essentially a sort of social proofing that we've been picked to do this. This many people support us. Maybe you could roll the ball a little further along. And how much did you actually raise ultimately uh, through this process? Um, with Slice of the Pie, we raised $11,000. And, and you couldn't have done the album without that? No, not I mean, we probably could have. We certainly couldn't have done the album that we did without that. And, I mean, it would have been a slower and, yeah, less glamorous process. And when did it actually come out? Um, the digital release came out on the 6th of June, I believe. 
um, which was kind of pushed because we were going to Canada to play in North by Northeast. So we kind of tried to push it to get it out in time with that. So we're still working on the physical release, actually. Oh. So we still owe our investors some exciting products. And, and how the digital release, I mean, how how's that been received so far? Yeah, it's been great. I think everyone across the board has been very kind, particularly my mother has been very nice about it for the first time in our career. Um, yeah, it's gone really well. And we actually just came back to play a few shows in Dublin and London and Amsterdam just recently, which is the first time actually playing the new songs to people, which, yeah, it's been really good. Um, I think people are saying definitely Catherine's voice is like it's the strongest they've heard it and things. And I think we got a much clearer sense. It was a long process. Like it's great. Fan funding is great. And I can certainly see, obviously, I think a lot of people would be as happy or much happier having a record label there to support you, to give you the money, but also to give you the guidance. So for us, the process of recording the album was as much learning how to record an album. And I think if we were doing like next time we do an album, we'll definitely approach things quite differently. Would you use this model to fund an album again? Do you think? That's interesting. Um, I think so. I mean, there's something wonderful about just basically being, having the people who want to hear your music invest so that you get to make the music that they want to hear. And that's really, it does take out the middleman. And these days, that's such a great opportunity that you just wouldn't have had 10, 15 years ago. Um, we would, I think we'd plan it out a lot more carefully and yeah, be aware of what we're doing a lot more. We're definitely making it up as we went along and then you kind of end up doing things and it's all, it's, it's an interesting process. And we learned so much. and I think we had to grow up a lot while doing it, which is great. Like it makes you take yourself seriously, Ben, when you've got this many people investing in you saying, come on, let's do something. So no bad thing. And what's the time scale on the physical release now for the album? Um, the physical release should be out within a month or so. I mean, it's just like doing the tour here and things. We just haven't had time to get. We were trying to get everything together, but just artwork really is what's holding us up at this stage. So Now, you've already mentioned uh, your tour of Canada. And of course, this is where crowdfunding comes in again isn't it because this was a yeah. became your second project didn't it yeah no absolutely and we certainly felt slightly sheepish in some ways because people gave us all this money to record the album which was fantastic and then this opportunity came up to play at north by northeast which is canada's answer to south by southwest it's a big music conference and that was in june i guess 10th to 15th i think we went um so we were literally kind of in the closing stages, just mixing the album and things like that. And then we got this invitation and it just seemed like really the worst time we could possibly do it. And we'd completely kind of come to the end of our funds for the album and everything. So we didn't have that there. Um, and we just literally thought, well, we'll give it a go. And if people want to support us and like if people believe in us and think we should go, then that's great. And it was really, that was the deciding factor because we knew we couldn't afford to go on our own. So we just put a $2,000 target on Kickstarter, which is the American for crowdfunding platform, which is actually, it was interesting to see how two different platforms compared because they definitely have a slightly different approach. Um, but yeah, we put it in and people were very kind and nice and supported us and got us there. And what would you say was the difference between the, the, the style of the slice the pie model? And, um... As I say before, the slice the pie one was focused on investing, whereas Kickstarter is much more, not fluffy is the wrong example, but they don't, they try and sell it as kind of fan experiences. I mean, they're really, it's quite an open platform, so you can do whatever you want to do, but they're very good with, they have a lot of paperwork and things to show you these are good ways to invest. This is the way, it's a very friendly platform as well. Like you, if someone invests, they immediately get a pop-up saying you've invested, why don't you post it on Facebook or Twitter to say that you've invested. So it encourages kind of to spread the network effect like that. We just found them very easy to deal with, but at the same time, they had their own rules and restrictions. They worked through, one of the things I would say to people if you're doing stuff is take a look at like if you're choosing between different platforms there's they each take a certain cut of the money and kickstarters is quite reasonable i think it's five percent plus then they work through amazon payments which take another one and a half percent or something slice the pie was ten percent but then slice the pie had a fixed community of investors who brought in more money so yeah it's just be aware of the terms like the fine print when you're going in definitely and so you, you raised the money for this uh, tour successfully through Kickstarter then. I mean, were these fans in, in Canada who, who helped you out mostly or was it from all over? No, it was mostly from all over. I mean, we, again, bundled. It's all about getting good incentives and things. So we had downloads of the album. We had socks and things. And we had, like, we were going to send people postcards from Canada, which we did. We went to see Niagara Falls on our last day there and took a picture of ourselves standing in front of it and forwarded that on to people. So some of it was definitely fans in Canada. Because actually, one of the reasons we've been focusing on Canada was because, I mean, with the beauty of the internet, people just contact you from all over, and Canada's one of the places that seemed to like our mid-90s post-grunge sound or whatever, and they'd always, like, tried to get us to come. So that was really good. But it was it was a mix of people from all over the world. 
and that was nice. I mean, that's great as well. Absolutely. And you've, so you've just had this uh, a little European tour and you're back in California yeah. now. Uh, what's next for the band? <sighs> I don't know. I'm asleep for a couple of weeks. Um, it's, yeah, it's all been quite hectic. I think definitely next is we're trying to get the physical release out because that's, I mean, we were conscious of having owed that to people for quite a while. The actual process of writing the album as well, we kind of, we're going to do half of older songs in a newer way and then half new songs. And actually, the more new songs we wrote, the more we wanted to sound newer. So we ended up throwing out a lot of that. And so the actual process dragged on a lot longer than we intended, which is why, yeah, we definitely have a sense of obligation to our investors. So if we were to do it again, we would need to make sure that we're clear about what we're offering and that we can stand up, hold up our end of the bargain, which I believe sometimes can be a problem with these kind of fan funded things. There's not quite a guarantee. Like sometimes the band just falls apart in the middle of it and then investors are left going, I just put my money in. What happened? So yeah, getting out the physical release is definitely key, and then I think probably a tour of California and stuff. And uh, uh, finally, uh, crowdfunding, you've tried it a couple of times, is it something you consider trying again? Yeah, I think there's a lot to recommend crowdfunding, and it's really good. There is definitely try and read as much about it before you get into it. The Kickstarter one was a much shorter window, it was 30 days. Which is great because there's only so long you can kind of keep on not hassling people but trying to get the word out. So having a focused time period, I think I do really approve of. And it's just a great way to spread the word about your music generally. But you do need to take it very seriously because it's nothing worse than kind of starting it, getting to $150 or whatever. And then it just slightly peters off and things. So you need to be involved. We posted regular videos for people like a different song recording a week or a live video or whatever. And that was, yeah, it's a great thing. I really endorse it and encourage people to get involved. Daniel, thanks very much for your time. No, thanks very much for the interview.